You know, they say that there's the best time to do anything, and the same applies to sleeping. In this video, I'm gonna tell you what's the best time to sleep. We're gonna figure out the optimal time for sleeping. Go to sleep, go to sleep. Sleep is the foundation of health and longevity. It governs many physiological and neurological repair processes, without which you'd look and feel much worse. How much sleep you need depends on your genetics, age, levels of physical activity, seasonality, chronotype, and much more. Generally, it's said that children should get about 10 to 12 hours a day, and adults 7 to 9 hours. However, sleeping more isn't necessarily better. But what matters more than the quantity of your sleep is the quality of it, how well you actually sleep. There are certain sleep stages that are more valuable than others, and you can spend 10 hours in bed without getting a full night's rest. On the other hand, you can get all the recovery you need from just 6 hours of sleep, if it's high quality. Factors that determine sleep quality are how fast you fall asleep or sleep latency, how much deep sleep and REM sleep you get, what kind of wavelengths of light you get exposed to during the day and in the evening, the electromagnetic environment of your bedroom, your psychological state and stress levels, how many times you wake up per night, how do you feel in the morning, what time you go to bed, what time you wake up, what's your mood and well-being, how energized you feel after waking up, how is your physical and mental performance, what's your basal heart rate and heart rate variability. All of these factors that I mentioned, they're gonna determine the overall quality of your sleep as well as the quality of your sleep last night and how much quality did you get from it. That's why you can't just expect to get a fully optimized good night rest if you don't pay attention to these things. You just go to bed and hope for the best. Bed goes up, bed goes down. However, the timing of when you sleep has a huge impact on the overall quality of your sleep and how much sleep you need. Some hours of the night are more productive than others and you can gain a higher quality from them. Every living organism has some sort of a sleep wakefulness cycle and a circadian rhythm. It's linked with the day and night cycles of the planet and affects all of your physiological processes including sleep. After darkness, your body should start producing melatonin, the sleep hormone. It makes you more sleepy, down-regulates wakefulness boosting hormones and prepares the body for recovery by increasing growth hormone and autophagy. Unfortunately, melatonin secretion can be disrupted with blue light exposure before bed which will disrupt the body's circadian clocks and decrease the sleep quality. Misaligned circadian rhythms and poor sleep are linked to metabolic syndrome, obesity, depression, neurodegeneration, diabetes and cancer. Being out of sync causes more stress and inflammation to the body, which just makes it harder to stay healthy. That's why you should try to avoid artificial light sources as much as possible, at least a few hours before bed, to protect melatonin production. You can also wear blue light blocking glasses to filter out the harmful wavelengths. To get the most out of your sleep and optimize your circadian rhythm, then you would have to sleep when nature does. That's gonna align yourself with the circadian rhythms of the environment and it puts less stress on the body. Here are a few key points to remember when trying to optimize your circadian rhythm. Melatonin production should start around 10 to 11 p.m. and peaks at 2 a.m. This is done in conjunction with other repair hormones like growth hormone and autophagy that also increase around that time. You'd want to be in bed before midnight at the latest, and preferably at 11 p.m. Cortisol, the wakefulness hormone, starts rising 5 to 7 a.m. and peaks at 9 a.m. Melatonin drops at dawn completely, so the body could be woken up and energized by cortisol. This gives you the perfect time for getting 7 to 9 hours of sleep between 11 p.m. and 7 a.m. Exposure to morning sunlight is important for producing melatonin at night. The UVA light helps to lower cortisol and promotes the conversion of serotonin into melatonin during night. That's another reason to try and get up early with the sunrise. You should go outside and expose yourself to daylight throughout the day. This keeps your body's circadian clocks in sync with the environment. Direct sunlight has a luminosity of our 32,000 to 130,000 lux compared to the 320 and 500 lux of a typical office building. Even if it's cloudy with no sun, some of the light waves will penetrate through the clouds and you'll still get the effect. Don't consume caffeine in the afternoon. Caffeine has a half-life of 5.7 hours, which means that if you drink coffee at 12 p.m., then 50% of it will still be in your system at 6 p.m. The best time to drink coffee is between 9.30 a.m. and 12, because that's when your quarters levels are the lowest. There are small differences in the way these rhythms get expressed between people, seasonality, latitude, and chronotypes. However, they differ only like one to two hours. 
For instance, morning people tend to start producing melatonin an hour sooner than evening people, but it's not really natural to be having the chronotype of a night owl who stays up past midnight. Night owl chronotypes are more caused by the disruptive light environment, habits and hectic wakefulness schedules. Humans are diurnal creatures, which means we're supposed to be active during the daytime and sleep at night. An optimal circadian rhythm for sleeping cycles is somewhere between 9 p.m. and 8 a.m. That's the longest time frame wherein you should get the most of your sleep. These are the most productive hours of sleep in terms of getting the additional boost from growth hormone and melatonin. Sleeping between these hours will increase your sleep quality without needing to sleep for that long. So basically, you can sleep faster and deeper. Just sleep a little faster. If you were to sleep at a different time, let's say between 2 a.m. and 10 a.m., then you would just put more stress on your body and you would offset the circadian rhythm, which in the long term isn't that optimal and it may cause some health issues down the line. You can still be healthy as long as your other lifestyle factors are, you know, covered and you do get the enough hours. It's just that sleeping within the optimal circadian rhythm is just going to enable you to get away with shorter sleeps while, without sacrificing the quality of it. However, if you suffer from some health problems like blood sugar irregularities, insulin resistance, stubborn fat loss, forgetfulness, blood pressure, poor willpower, or some form of malignancy, then it might have to do with circadian misalignment and poor sleep. And who knows, it might be the missing piece of the puzzle when it comes to optimizing your health and getting a good night's sleep. If you want to know how to sleep better, get more deep sleep, establish the optimal circadian rhythm, and improve overall recovery, then check out my Total Sleep Optimization video course. It has over 8 hours of content, lectures, infographics, and walkthrough guides about getting the most out of your sleep. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click the like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered. Just sleep a little faster.